Hello everybody, David here, and I have this sound-activated switch from, I guess, Ellen Co. Electronics. It's this little, uh, little board right here, and let me show you the other side. Pretty neat, huh? It comes in a little kit with this instruction manual, and uh, you can see, oh, there's that model number. They show you what it's supposed to look like when it's all assembled. You can see there's an LED and it runs from a nine volt battery. It comes with this nifty assembly and instruction manual. So inside there are all these diagrams on like how to solder. Uh, they talk about, you know, how transistors work. Um, then there's an entire diagram for what to put where on the board. And then you just solder it all together yourself. There's even this little explanation of uh, how the circuit works. And then finally, on the back, there's the actual circuit. Now, you'll probably realize that I didn't hook up, first of all, the battery. Uh, it's supposed to go here where you see that B plus and B minus. Let me focus the camera. Yeah, that B plus and B minus, that's where it's supposed to go. And I also didn't hook up that LED, and I'm missing resistor 17 and resistor 16. Now, I actually intentionally left those out because I don't intend on controlling an LED with this switch and also I don't intend on running this from a 9 volt battery. Instead, so let's see where is it, I want to find right here. That's a transistor, you see that LED, you can see on the circuit in the back, the LED comes through here, there's the current limiting resistor. And then there's this transistor here, right? Uh, it's using the output from this logic gate to decide whether a current can flow from there through there and to ground. So this, the output of this logic gate is deciding whether the LED turns on or off. So, okay, what I really want to do is control my room lights with this clap circuit. So, you know, um, you can probably see back there, that's kind of my dorm room control center. Uh, you know, I want to be able to turn my lights on and off by clapping. And that's the other thing, I'm not gonna run it off a nine volt battery, I'm probably just gonna use a nine volt regulator and uh, attach those to the uh, B plus and B minus terminals right there. So. Basically, instead of the batteries right now, I have it hooked it up. I have it hooked up to my DC power supply, which is over there, and I have these wires hooked up to. Uh, basically, uh, if you look at the traces, you can kind of see um, this ground trace connects to that battery minus, right? So I put it here, and I put the uh, the red wire on this big trace over here, which is connected to battery plus. So basically, I'm powering the circuit with nine volts right now. And it's not using that much power, uh, like my ammeter on the uh, bench actually is not is still showing zero, so it's kind of hard to tell whether it's working or not. But what I really want to see is the output of the uh, this logic gate right here. You can see that's resistor 16, it says right there. So basically, I just need to figure out where on the circuit board resistor 16 is and just read this voltage off of that. So, time for my trusty uh, multimeter. I'm going to turn that on and set it to a maximum of 20 volts. Yes, it's a manual ranging uh, multimeter. Uh, don't make fun of me. Okay. All right. So, you're just going to take the red lead. So, I've already put the black lead from the multimeter over to ground, the same ground on my uh, DC supply bench. And, uh, well, it's kind of upside down, but you can see resistor 16 is supposed to be right there. And uh, lo and behold, yep, there's a trace right here. Go, let me focus that camera again. Uh, hang on. There we go. There's a trace right here going from that leg on the uh, on this chip right here to uh, that pin through that hole, which I guess is where resistor 16 is supposed to go. So I'm just going to uh, put my red probe in that hole and uh, just kind of 
lean it against my computer here so that it'll stay. Okay, and uh, look at that. We're reading 9 volts. Oh, well, it's going on and off right now. I'm going to stop talking. Cool. Oh, wait. Ah, it's falling down. Cool. Hang on, is it even connected? No, it's not. Let's try that again. Nine volts. So you see, every time I clap my hands, uh, it's uh, the uh, voltage is going from zero to nine volts and back. However, it seems that when I'm talking, it's also picking up my sound. Luckily, there's a potentiometer here. I can use that to adjust the sensitivity. So let me just turn it this way. Let's try it now. Sweet. Okay, so now you can see that I'm talking, but that's not triggering the sensor right here. You can see the microphone's right there. So if I go tap on that. Okay, maybe not. Let me clap my hands. And boom, zero. Awesome. You know what this means. Oh, oops, I turned it on again. You know what this means. All I have to do to get this to work with the Raspberry Pi is to uh, wire something into that hole right there where uh, resistor 16 would have gone. And uh, I will have to do some uh, voltage dividing to get those uh, 9 volts on the meter safely down to uh, the Raspberry Pi's 3.3 volts because obviously I don't want to uh, fry my Raspberry Pi with... Uh, over over volting at GPIO pin. But anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for now. I will post another video when this is all hooked up and the software is all coded. So yeah, until next time guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.